Three, two, one, podcast, go! Hey everyone, Orkide here with Bearded Check, and in the middle of us is Mako- Masocast. God dang it. Macosast. Macosast. <laughs> <laughs> Find him on. Sounds like that better. Yeah. <laughs> we are trying out a new type of podcast, and this is our first one with our special guest, Masocast. Here is Star Citizenship Special. Let's get started. All right, Ooh, so okay, Mascast. Okay, okay, okay. All right, sorry, I've got to interrupt you. Go ahead. Again, three beards, three beards. I demand that every time you're making a salient point, you must stroke your beard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, right. I like that. We will, we will make sure to make a point of that during this podcast only. <laughs> it's a very special bearded podcast. <laughs> bearded podcast. There I approve. Go. Special episode, Beards. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk Beards. Well, you know what? I tried talking about Beards uh, on Twitter. Oh, and yeah. whenever you watch like Star Season Live, like if you look at Disco Lando or anyone else, like whenever you, you check the studio shot, it, like there's so many people with beards. Mm-hmm. And even the Bubblehead had beard. And yeah. why the crap are we not having beards in Star Season? It's crazy. Just we, we need beards. Yeah. They're working on it. Oh they yeah, are, are they? Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They but are also like working. if you're going to talk about from a safety perspective, I will say as somebody who works with uh, or or has to use masks, uh, beards are bad. Yeah, you can't get a good seal know. around this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's true. Like also from personal experience on board cruise ships, if mm-hmm. I am in a fire department, which you like do apart from your your regular job, yeah, I can I can have a beard like this, but. Have you seen those helmets? I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Like, there's enough That's space true. for there's a beard. And room. there's, like, a bunch of different ones. <laughs> Maybe not Orchids. We, <laughs> well, you can, like, you know, change it a little bit, you know, just. No. no. It has to in stay. In-game, in-game. Just... Oh, no, in-game? No, it's yeah. going to be just like this. Okay. It, I mean, I can crop up. You've, you've seen my new emote bit. that's coming out. It's got the beard hanging outside of the helmet. That's true. I Your mean... emote is, is flipping <laughs> out. That's true. <laughs> so no matter what, this beard's not going anywhere. If it doesn't fit in the helmet, it'll sit outside of the helmet, I guess. So. <laughs> Please, uh, hard vacuum has got nothing. Beards. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone, we we're trying something new. We're trying out a new podcast. Uh, we'd like to, like we said in the very beginning of all our other podcasts before, um, we would like to recognize some of those in the Star Citizen community, have folks on, be able to enjoy a talk about our favorite subjects. First was beards, of course, as you heard, uh, and you know we might segue at some point into a game called Star Citizen. Uh, at first thing I want to ask, because I had this conversation, I actually streamed today for a few hours and it was crazy. And I was getting into the idea of it would be nice and check, you hold your comment because I know, uh, it would be nice if Star Citizen had like a poll on their website for pledge, uh, backers to say what is your number one priority that they fix in the next patch so people can actually have an input and have some kind of feedback to say what is our priority what do we want fixed so i'm curious maso if you could pick one thing in star citizen right now what would you want fixed in there and we're talking about like bugs specifically not like a feature to be added hey yeah Um, we'll talk bugs first right now oh my god the weapon dropping the the fps weapon yeah. dropping bug it, oh it hasn't happens? been as bad Ugh, it still happens it hasn't been as bad but it still happens yeah and I, like yeah man, lots of weapons i still don't know how actually because i was not even using them there's been there's been people who've been in my stream we've talked about even ship weapon weapons have been disappearing and that shit gets expensive real quick yeah. oh yeah you've got you know like uh i mean even the fps weapons is bad enough you know like two grand every time a gun disappears you know so, Even more, like depending what you're using, it can go like, mm. it can go much higher, like six, seven thousand for snipers and stuff. Like, yeah. I suspect it may have something to do with them trying to implement uh, database persistence, so it 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 might just be growing pains for that. But anyways, uh, so that, I, I'm surprised actually because yeah. I know I I know that you are all about flying and um, do you do a lot I'm of FPS missions? 
I yeah. don't, but uh, but it's annoying I, though. It's a very annoying bug. Yeah. FPS missions are one of the things that are kind of fun to do with um, you know, like with viewers and with like multiple multiple people playing with you. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. So so it was really bad in eight point or two point eight point oh, three point eight point oh. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, and it was it because then we were like, if you swap and all that, like that was, that was really bad. That, really like bad. that was really really bad. Now it's much yeah. better. But I, yeah, I'm telling you, man, I'm losing weapons that I'm not even using. Like I have it on my back, and then tomorrow I'm like, where's my weapon? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I've actually noticed this now because this happened to me when we, I was doing prospect mining. I always put on my rucksack uh, and then do mining with that on. So that way when I go do FPS mining and then when I switch back to my regular armor, I've lost two guns now because of that. Because yeah. if you don't huh. unequip your guns before you swap armor, it seems like you're yeah. losing it that way now. So I don't, I don't even bother equipping weapons anymore unless I'm actively going to do an FPS. Yes, yeah, so just keep it in your inventory. Yeah. Um, and and but... that actually, what Torka had said is crazy because I remember like one or two patches ago, like we were. That's how we were swapping weapons and armor, right? We we're just changing the under armor basically and mm -hmm. that would swap your entire yeah, loadout yeah, yeah, which yeah. was very handy and so people yeah. who are used to it now when they do it they lose weapons or yeah that's yeah and that gets expensive real quick yeah um yeah so i think that would be my number one but uh but also yeah like hearing about people also losing you know like missile loadouts and stuff like that and even you know i've been losing, losing weapons, torpedoes yeah. yeah yeah losing uh losing ship weapons that's brutal so like easily the whole losing components weapons things like that that is that is like you know top on my list to fix yeah um, it, it's annoying I, so, I agree so Probably, check i'd ask the same question to you do you have one in particular that you also think needs to be fixed above all else i i feel pressured because i have a feeling that you're expecting me to say something and uh but i'm just going to touch on this like yesterday actually when you said about weapons maso I, I fly Retaliator a lot this patch, and um, I would literally like add six new torpedoes uh, and change server, like just log out, log back in, and I have no torpedoes again. And mm. and torpedo is like thousand per <laughs> yeah. per torpedo is like six thousand every time that happens. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, actually, well, the worst part for me. Okay, I have I, I think right, but these are like small things that, that I'm sure they know these are like problems, but that OM that is on Stanton or somewhere oh, when your computer is OMs. like trying to yeah, calculate yeah. stuff and, and it tries and to read time, into the sun. Yes. Now now if you know about this issue, so basically let's say you're at PO and you want to go to Yella and it mm -hmm. might send you to Stanton first and then to Yella because one of the the OMs of Stanton are like this place one, one of the crusader oms mm -hmm. Cru crusaders yeah sorry yeah. Uh, but i said stanton <laughs> yeah. well i mean you were right in that it tries <laughs> yeah, to prove it's stanton yeah. the star yeah yeah uh but, so but... the problem is if you know you kind of get like oh again and then you find your way around but we were chasing we were doing a bunch of like um uh, bounty hunting missions and i was chasing someone like like crazy and then i went to stanton and i'm like what's happening instead of yellow for example and i'm like oh yeah. And I've lost it. Someone else killed them. They, All the chase for like 15 minutes was gone. And that was, yep. that was the one that I brought up during the stream. Was the, it, and it's not just Crusader because it's happening in Hurston too. Because really? every time we're trying to jump from uh, Ariel back to Hurston, if you're on the opposite side, you have to go to one of the Comrades or you have to. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's OM1s that are broke for some reason. And because I wonder if that's. Yeah. So I'm also noticing that, like, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but when you're try just trying to lock to, to try to get a jump point to chart or to get a quantum route to chart at all yes. has been really tricky this patch. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that was explained by a few people who play a lot um, in my chat that they have probably changed this because of. So currently, the issue that we have, and I'm lucky to, I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm lucky and I'm not getting this low, but you know, when you get like a jump very near the edge of the planet, you might end up hitting the planet and exploding, right? Mm -hmm. So um, someone mentioned that they have made everything a little bit more like, how do I say this? It? Like you, you need to go further away in order to avoid this, this potential 
uh, potential hit to the planet. And mm. apparently they have lowered this with that. It's like, it's not a solution, but it was like a workaround because it's mm. really annoying, especially yeah. now people are like characters are there. There's a bunch of uh, caterpillars, people doing trading and losing, you know, ships full of trade mm. stuff. It's very annoying and people are probably... That, that would happen a lot, Crusader to Port Olisar, because it would be right on the edge and when mm. you start that jump, it looks like you should you should miss it, but the I, I don't know if it's the gravity or something else that pulls you in. But it, wow. as you were getting it's close it, to it, yeah. you'd see your ship shake, and then it'd just blow up. So yeah. I, I never actually had this. Zone. That's crazy. Uh, but I'm 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 lucky, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So... I have another one to add that I I'm actually curious if you guys are getting this, but this started happening to me in this patch, and. I can so I take a bounty and I let's say muscle is my bounty and I find you I chase you down and I can see your marker like oh. 100 meters away but I only mm -hmm. see your marker I don't see your ship at all I can't target you I can't do anything and this was never happening before to me and and it constantly happens I have this one and I and the other one is I can't fire my torpedoes even if I have them equipped I don't know I don't know if this is retaliator thing or I've never seen it before. So, I don't know. So you can't see the ship at all? No, yeah, but I okay. see the name. Like, see, like if they're on another one. shard or something. I don't know. Hmm. I've I've had the problem where just uh, you know the markers in general are so inaccurate they're almost laughable. Like you can't you can't even use them. You know, like I've I've had people on on uh, playing with me saying that like my marker shows that I'm a hundred meters away when I'm standing right next to them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, like yeah, those we... are party markers. So I I feel like. From what I understand, I think that's that's um, some of the basically like server server issues they've been having, like, with, like really low and... server t yeah, tick rates and stuff like that. Yeah, we, we tested this actually, but in FPS, you remember, Rocket? Like mm -hmm. you were targeting something and aiming, and you're firing, and and you look at my screen where I'm looking at you, like firing a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. whenever we had this, you're missing the, <laughs> oh, yeah. you're missing the target, like and because actually you're not shooting where you're looking, which is, but I I mean. I have to say I have understanding for this. These are the server that we are playing on is it's not a great day server that we're gonna play the game. You know what I mean? Like it's very annoying, but isn't it an AWS server? I no, I don't know. I don't know these technical things, but I kind of feel like you know the this I don't feel like this is the server that we're gonna play the game when they're when they're you know ready to go. I or think maybe beta I, or the server architecture itself is Amazon Web Services and like that's I mean you're hard pressed to find better ones as far as i understand because they have all of the resources yeah. of amazon behind them however um todd pappy in the latest uh star citizen live uh actually addressed a desync issue uh, a desync question he said it's actually not server network based and it's not server-side ocs it's a uh, it's a bug that they're having with their physics right now with like oh. some of the new physics refactors that they're doing Oh, so he really? says that's why we're seeing all these these uh, desyncs and stuff like that, which I thought was interesting because um, the question actually was like, since server side OCS came out, we're having all these yes, issues. Yes, I remember you know, the question. Like, what's, yeah. what's the deal with server side OCS? And he's like, it's not server side OCS. It's it's physics issues that they're. And it just they're happened to have like happen at the same time or i don't know it's just uh yeah well it probably was something that that was that they're either working on in or or was implemented in 3.8 uh mm. would be my my guess because they're constantly doing physics tweaks and stuff like that like patch to patch right so anyways but, according to him that's why we're seeing kind of these these desync issues and stuff like that and, oh, oh my god I, I really hope we see some that would i mean improving that. that would be just a different game and i just yeah. want to say Having Todd Pappy on Star Season Live, oh, yes. that's so good, man. Like, even if it was shorter and they were, like, in a rush and they were late and everything. Yeah. Oh, you get, like, this raw information, man. It's I like I Todd Pappy a so lot. So good. He's I really great. was frustrated by a lot of the questions because the topic was supposed yeah. to be all about 3.9. <laughs> and all the questions were, like, not 3.9 questions. Yeah. He was like, no. But he was... Not he was answering even some of those. Like I remember him sure. saying something where, like this is 4.0 or 4.1, but and yeah. he, I mean the thing is you can pick his brain about so many things. He knows everything. 
Yeah. It's so good when you have someone like that. Yeah. I wish they were doing that more often. But I understand, like, even now it was like calling a rush and everything. But it was because he's a he's a producer, right? Like he's a project manager. That's that's yeah. exactly what is in his wheelhouse. Is like who's doing what. Exactly. And, he has uh, to know everything. Like Yeah. <laughs> and what, what the timelines are like because he's the guy who's kind of trying to plug it all in, you know? Like yeah. So yeah, I I really appreciate Todd Pappy showing up on on stuff like that any show with todd pappy is a is a good one and and frankly you're right i mean it is it is a good time to ask those questions you know that may not necessarily pertain to 3.9 but uh because no like i, I said, agree with you i mean uh, but i'm just saying like even that if it's an important question he knows the answer he would go out of his way and try yeah. to answer like in short mm-hmm. and and you could see this colando being like yeah, <laughs> yeah like, <you> know, <laughs> he'll just give it to you straight right and then yeah. disclando starts tries to add all the uh tries to add all the like uh like disclaimers yeah. afterwards and like yeah, yeah. Enough, i get it but like i appreciate todd pappy just being like yes uh, no. great you know like <laughs> since we started playing it it's not that long but the best episode so far yesterday i told uh, orca because orca you kind of stop watching this because it's not really that much of a content that we care about, to be honest. Yeah. I still watch it, but I'm like, come on, man. Like, I don't care about bubbleheads, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and then yesterday I was like, dude, you, you should really watch this one. Like, it's finally yeah. a really good episode. Man. Yeah. I usually let I... Chegg, uh, you know, quality control. I'm the control. consumer. Yeah. <laughs> he, he checks all yeah. the, con- the content and lets me know what yeah. I really need to look at. <laughs> I understand that they're trying to give a spotlight to different aspects of the game, but I have always you think that's been, what they're doing. Uh, yeah, like you know, like that's well, either that or they're really reaching for content, or mm. maybe both. That's maybe what both. I think it's happening. I think they promised something to because this comes from subscriptions, if I'm not wrong, and they need to deliver something weekly, yeah. and then they're like. Honestly, I did not have this feeling until the bubbleheads because the guy who was making mm-hmm. bubbleheads, he did not even swim properly in the True. program that he was making yes. bubbleheading. It was like we could do we need entire, someone here, you know. Yeah. We could do an entire episode on what the hell is going on with the subscriber content. It's oh been, man, but it has been kind of kind of beat to death, you know, like I <laughs> I have a solution for that, but everybody we all have solutions for What's it. What's your Ultimately, solution? Can we I mean, Ultimately, we don't know what the hell is going on in the background. My solution was was something that was well, something it wasn't even my solution. It, somebody mentioned like, why is it just Jared? You know, like why oh. don't they have additional people? Kind of, you know. By the way, he's great, but him. I agree. Yeah, yeah, like, but but ultimately, but uh, it was actually Buster who pointed out. Well, you don't know that that's the bottleneck. You know what I mean? Like that's it. it it's not necessarily a staff thing. It could be a I mean, I don't know if it, apparently I heard that at last Citizen Con, man, they had their freaking legal team basically like shepherding all their devs around to make sure that they didn't say stuff that they that they weren't supposed to, you know, like so it, Open it could development, that could, how, yeah. how can that be a thing? Just saying it, it could be it could be that. It could be it the could reason be, yeah. you know, it could be that they've just they've they've I mean he like, obviously okay, has experience with that. We've got a lawsuit basically and uh uh, resulting from us showing too much uh, That's true. you know it could be that they've just said okay well we want to be as open as we can but but for you gotta the protect yourself of, you i gotta mean protect yourself so yeah. you know and, and it could just be that they're playing the pr game too and they exactly. feel like they can't they can't that, they can't share stuff because it'll end up being negative news but we don't know ultimately and this, to be fair this Orlando is good with this game like he knows when yeah. and what to say yeah and i almost yeah. feel like that's why they use jared for most of the stuff is he probably has mm. more knowledge on what you can say what you can't say and he can lead people in yeah, the conversation job, to a specific area so but we don't want that we want job. someone no well, <laughs> well, they like, can't throw out something that they can't do that <laughs> yeah i, but, well, but I don't even like, Sorry, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, I don't even, I don't even. It's it. We don't know enough to know what the actual solution to this this issue would be. All we know is that they they've definitely been lackluster in the content that they have been delivering. Uh, you know, in in certain occasions, occasionally we get these gems where we get Todd True. Pappy to come on, 
and you know and just level with us basically but uh <laughs> but uh I, you know that's that's probably I don't even why feel like this should be the the subscription thing like i think everyone mm. needs to get this episode with todd papi regardless i mean everyone does but i don't think like the money from subscription should be the reason that an episode like this happens yeah so i just i just want to ask you a question uh, i ask you guys a simple question in in that regardless of you if you're paying subscription or not what would make you pay the subscription what would make it worth worth it for you because i don't really understand why would i pay sub ten dollars instead of adding ten dollars to my account and eventually turn that into a bigger or better ship okay um you're okay go yeah. I'll, uh, I'll end i'll finish it i think we didn't we talk about this on one of our podcasts I, about, it, I think it was we've my talked about it on the stream or on the podcast and i can't remember but yeah. i would love to have the subscription almost be like a savings account up to certain things like you should be able to go into the specialized subscription store. You pay your subscription, maybe you get to get that, you know, ship to try out once, you know, for one week out of the month or something. You get these little swag items, like the different colored knives. Those are nice, too. Um, but at the same time, you should be able to earn points from a subscription to earn towards stuff to kind of in the pledge store not so much you know large ships or anything like that that's but a really good idea if they were to do something like that where you get a, some kind of points or get some kind of dollar amount for your you sub you technically do th get that now well it, no, in a get sense the discount code. yeah you get discount codes okay, but i'm code. saying yeah. i'm saying someone that subscribes for like uh, so it's twofold one would be if you're a subscriber and you stay a subscriber x amount of months let's say for a year you get a free ship, which is going to be something nice like, I don't know, you get to pick from like three different ships, a con light or combat. A or, yeah, something like that. Like there should be incentives to the subscription, either a point system to be able to save up and spend those points in a store to get different things. And even at some point, put ships in there so that way you could, you know, someone that's been subbed for four or five years, they should be able to go in there and be like, all right, I want a Carrick. <laughs> and so, so similar to what we have now with the uh, recruitment kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and that's nice. Similar. I like the, yeah. I like the referral program, but it's really hard because a lot of the people that are just playing star citizen by themselves they're not going to be able to get that referral code out there and get people to yeah, join I mean, and get just those like a system, incentives. Not, yeah, it's a different thing. Really. It, but exactly, yeah, some kind of incentive system to subscribe. Yeah. So, well, I think I think one of the things that's brilliant about that is that it kind of it is it's something that would alleviate one of the concerns that Chegg just illustrated. Like, why would I put ten dollars a month mm -hmm. into subscription when I could just put ten dollars away and then oops sorry bump the mic uh and then buy a buy a spaceship you know you know one of the ways to get around that is exactly like you said you, you have a sort of a almost a loyalty program where yeah. uh, after you've been subbed for so long you 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 can earn points and you could spend that on a on a spaceship or have it maybe convert to a like a cash value credit towards one or something mm -hmm. like that I think that's a great idea. Personally, it, that would that would incentivize me to sub subscribe for and, sure. And like you said, yeah. even even that subscription, if it were to be a point system, can turn into dollars. Like you get five thousand points total, and that's mm -hmm. you know maybe you get a thousand every month. Five thousand points equals five dollars towards a CCU. So maybe it'll help. But, but discount then why would your... you again? Why, if you're not getting the same amount, why would you use? Why would you not? just add to well, your account it would be the it would be the, the other benefits too like mm -hmm. so so the the sub benefits that you get right now are subscriber flare uh you know early access to jump point if that matters to you you know st stuff like that right so so I, I, what i'm seeing or what i was hearing this as was uh you know in addition to those subscriber benefits you also get you know points that you could either spend towards bonus gear right. uh you for lower point values you could uh for lower point values you could also have like cosmetic purchases or something like that above and beyond perhaps your your subscription tier and then if you just keep hanging on to that and keep paying this up for so long then then you could spend those 
you know, like maybe higher point values on, on a ship as well. Just, just something to incentivize it a little more. I mean, at the end of the day, it probably would still be more economical if, if your only focus is spaceships, you know, mm-hmm. then it still probably would end up being more beneficial for you to just put that money aside and, and support spaceships. But, but, uh, or, 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 and then, and then buy a spaceship or support the project that way. But, uh, you know, for a lot of the people who subscribe, it's, it's also that they want to support that open open development. They want to support the uh, video content and stuff like that because that's what subscribe sub- subscription fees are supposed to be. Most of the people I I know who are subscribed do it for an idealistic reason, not for. Not I agree. For the, yeah, not for the. I'll be uh, like bluntly benefits. honest. I would rather at this point, I would rather just pay ten bucks a month for nothing than for what the reward is. I know it sounds, Mm -hmm. I don't know, crazy, but, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the video content, I kind of feel like, I mean, I don't, I don't get that feeling that I'm getting something because I'm subscribing. And I really feel like episodes like this one with Todd Papi, it's like the general knowledge. Sorry, fuck off CIG, but everyone needs to know because everyone's, paying the project so that that's just sharing information and that's what open development is all about when it comes to subscriber flair as a new backer and i think this is very important as a new if you've been if you've been sub for i don't know five years i don't know how how long the sub program has been in you've been getting yeah but you've been getting you know something every month and if you've been subbed for many, many years, you kind of feel like, I don't want to lose this, you know, continuation of like, it's a collection thing. Yeah. As a new player, I can get one, one flare thing for my, I don't know, something that some people saw before and I might see in the future, but I will never be on the level where someone has been a backer for last many yeah. years, unless if I pay like for the package or whatever. So I really don't feel incentivized to start now six seven years later it just doesn't work yeah my solution and sorry my solution and and i am trying to find out what what's wrong with my idea is give me a little bit of flair and support whatever you want with my money that is 10 bucks a month or 20 and add these 20 10 or 20 bucks a month on my account because if you think about it, that's ten dollars a month, and in a span of a year, it's hundred twenty dollars. That's a um, freelancer. Right. I mean, yeah. it's not, yeah. it's not fucking javelin. It's a freelancer. Okay, mm-hmm. um, you in the at the end of the day, CIG is getting this money, and I can tell you right now, I'm from Serbia, where ten dollars is something, but hundred dollars is impossible for people to give. Orca, do you know? I have people in the in the chat from this region. They're just flying auroras, man. Like they can't afford mm-hmm. more because buying another ship is a lot of money for them. Yeah. However, if they were sub to the project and they're paying ten dollars a month, and then you know, hey, at the end of this year, I can buy myself a, cater- a caterpillar. Um, I just don't see the the, you know, people still buy ships, but then. And that's the store, like that's the credit that you were talking about, Orchid, as well. Mm-hmm. And and then I know my money is worth there in the end of the day. At that, like that way, I will always spend these ten dollars. Like I wouldn't miss it because it's just a good idea to get a little yeah. bit of flair. And at the end of the day, I have the money on my account that I can buy a ship potentially. And I don't see the downside of it. Well, I don't see the there downside. must be some. <laughs> I don't see the downside from that uh, from from CIG's perspective either because. Um, ultimately 10 bucks a month like if somebody is if somebody is is subscribing like you should be as a business that's preferable to to a sales based you know uh income because subscriptions you can chart that you can you can see exactly how much you're going to make over the course of a year from that person subscriptions are preferable to 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 a sales model because they're re- regular and they're reliable and and you know you would think that CIG from a business perspective would want to incentivize that over and, and, and give a streak reward and you know yeah. what i mean like yeah 
for sure i i i you know like so i i don't really see a disadvantage in that from from cig's perspective because i think that you know in in if if i were running that business i'd want as much guaranteed income as possible uh, i guarantee that 90 i don't know i think the increase in subscriptions would be insane in in like yeah. percentage wise and in the end of the day that's your money and some people might be saving for Carrick and then they buy new pants or I don't know, you know, because something happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you're giving 10 by 10, 10 by 10 bucks, it's like, you know, you can spare 10 bucks anyways. And then if you really want that care, you're going to buy it. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to yeah. affect your, your ship purchase anyways, but you will, even if you fail on buying the ship, you will still <laughs> well, add that money. And, and the whole thing, like I was saying that the incentive like I was talking about with the points and stuff like that would be equivalent to the amount you're subbed for. So if you were to do a ten dollar sub, let's say a thousand points, so ten dollars a thousand points. So it's the same. So yeah, you'd you'd get that much in points, but then that store would have things like clothing, armor, yeah, 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 yeah. weapons. Oh, you could so, spend this money yeah. on something, like, different. So if, if like he was, like Massa was saying, if ships aren't your big thing, you don't really care about what ship you're flying, then you can get persistent, you know, mm -hmm. weapons or armor or even land vehicles or whatever. Anything that's yeah. for sale in-game would be available through that uh, point store, so... We like when we started playing, which was not long ago. The moment we realized we can do whatever we want with the funds that we have invested in the game, kind of, mm -hmm. it blew blew our minds. We were, it was so much easier to give money, and yeah, more and more and more. Realization that you can just it's just crazy. just liquidate it and reapply exactly. it where where you want it. Yes, the, that moment the, where I realized I could there was my fleet. Oh my god, it blew my mind. Like, yeah. Like upgrading was, oh man, we're not like, I don't have to buy on a ship, I can upgrade. And then a few days later, someone explained and I tried it. And we were like, wait, I can just, I've tried every ship that you can buy now in the store. And um, I I never thought I'm going to be like 300 and something dollars in game after a few mm -hmm. months, but I am. And yeah. now yeah. I don't need don't to buy like anything. It's wasted. Exactly. But if I could like add $10 every month, which I can. I, I would certainly do it as a yeah. subscription, but yeah. I'm not buying anything right now because pff, I'm I'm done. I have I have the maximum amount that I can flip through every ship in the game right now. But if there was a subscription that is adding money to my account and eventually I can buy another ship or bigger ship or whatever, would you guys sub if that was a thing? I would. I uh, would definitely. Probably, actually, yeah. Because, uh, you know, one of the things that I have done in the past is like, and ultimately, I actually realized that this was kind of stupid after talking to Execute from the Infra Runners. I would just like buy an Aurora if I had an extra twenty-five bucks or whatever. You just buy an Aurora, you know, mm -hmm. because again, it doesn't matter. I don't want the Aurora, but eventually, I can yes. just melt it and apply it, you know, somewhere else. I was and, buying skins and for that's, five bucks. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking of. Was it, even if like if my ships would be my main thing, I would want to be able to sub yeah. in collect yeah, my points and get ships i wouldn't care to buy the aurora but i'm gonna get it because i want it in my fleet because i want yeah, I as many ships in my fleet as possible so it doesn't hurt. i don't even care about that i just want the credit to be able to apply to something that i do want but i sure. i was actually informed just by the way as a disclaimer here that that's a pretty stupid way to do it because if you come in with fresh cash you get war bond pricing which is often like 20 20 percent yes discounted so versus like going at it with credit that you've kind of accrued over time, you actually take a, a penalty there. So I have been informed that But I, I agree and disagree with that. that. Money into a separate account or something like that and then bring that fresh cash in. But uh but yeah, like I'm from I'm from Canada and and I hear you. Like our our basically any ship on the RSI website add thirty percent, you know, and that's mm -hmm. that's how much it actually costs. For oh, me. because of the tax. Because no, I don't because have of no, it's not tax. It's it's exchange rate. The yeah. U.S. dollar is is like thirty oh, percent yeah. stronger than the Canadian dollar, um, and uh, and yeah, like so, it is. It's when I'm if I'm gonna make a a big ship purchase, like oof, it hurts, man, because it's an additional thirty percent, you know, mm -hmm. for me. 
to make that purchase. And it's much easier to stomach that if I had just kind of been like squirreling away ten dollars, mm -hmm. you know. Because and, and, and think of and, it this way: like if you had one hundred and fifty, and then you want a carrot, it's now it's not five hundred or six hundred. It's yeah. 350 450 you know what i mean like <laughs> and and for those of us married with children it's a lot easier to justify ten dollars a month only it's wives not children of, just saying yeah, yeah true uh those of us with wives you can spend ten dollars a month on a game and you know I'm... not raise suspicion but when you start dropping a lot of money <laughs> into a single ship i'm pretty lucky because my partners are both pretty understanding yeah. but uh you know, but even in front of yourself, like it's okay. Yes. I'm back in 10, 20 bucks a month. Yeah, it's different when you're like, and I bet you you will still buy that ship right if it's you know if that's what you really want and you can't it afford is. it, you'll still buy it. You know what I mean? Like, it's about framing. It's about framing, framing the value. I think for me, and it sounds this sounds a lot like an like an addict talking here, but um, but the way i've started and i'm tangenting here but uh yeah. but the way i've started kind of breaking it down for myself or at least um feeling a little bit more okay about it is this is one of my hobbies you know it's what i like to do and i i've spent a lot of a lot of hours on it i was also into performance cars and let me tell you star citizen is way fucking cheaper than <laughs> oh <cars>. yeah <laughs> and and that's exactly the argument i use every time i buy something for a game i'm like i could either be an alcoholic spending thousands of dollars a year yeah. on alcohol or you know uh an enthusiast yeah. of sports spending money on tickets yep. if i was a, a car guy so i'm at about twelve hundred dollars yeah. right now in star citizen and that is a downpipe for my for my car right now like yeah. one part yeah. but, <laughs> but i mean you make money and you need to vent and if this is the way you enjoy spending your money like who's to judge yeah. yeah you're not doing anything bad to yourself yeah. or your environment it's it's so. simply because people like when you say it's a video game and you've spent this much on a video game it yeah. conjures like all these like you know instant repulsion kind of kind of feelings because it's like oh my god what am i doing but when you look at the actual hours you spend mm -hmm. uh, enjoying something you know then it's then it's different yeah. it's so. the feelings man if it makes you feel good yeah, yeah. there's no price on it and have, look I, at the okay smile huh yeah no and and that was my thing is like it that's exactly it because uh like we've talked about before i used oh, to play world sorry, of tanks we're, we're supposed oh to be man our we haven't done it a single like time that. yeah, that's sorry. true uh yeah when i was uh playing world of tanks you know i dumped hundreds maybe even thousands of dollars into that game and I How many played hours it. Of enjoyment you exactly get out of it, i played thousands of hours in that game i don't see a problem and and I had so much fun doing it. So yeah, that's what I equate you it go to. to a and... movie these days, a movie up here in Canada, if you want to go to like one of the IMAX ones or whatever, is seventeen dollars. Yeah, and that's what an it's hour and a half, Aurora. Or two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's an hour and a half, two hours of 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 uh, playtime there. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, salient point. You know, like just uh, you just got to look at. Uh, you know, hours, hours to dollars, hours of enjoyment to dollars spent. Exactly. And, uh, all of a sudden, Star Citizen seems a lot more reasonable. I'm sure that there are people who, who you know, have a problem with, but but I don't. Oh, for sure. You know, um, or you know, or larger numbers that would be harder to kind of justify under those sorts of, uh, under those sorts of rules that I've just set up. But like for me personally, the amount that I've spent on Star Citizen over the five years and the hours that I've I've spent playing, pretty reasonable. Yeah. Pretty reasonable. Yeah. So. And Anyways, just as a total digression, if, if but... you're not suffering, you know, IRL because of Spanish yeah. money, there's yeah, no I'm, issue with that, man. Not, I'm not spending food money. You yeah. know, this That's is my disposable thing. income. So, yeah. And Chegg said it a million times, too. You know, even if Star Citizen were to never pick up and actually yeah. release, it's still yeah. money invested money. in I've happiness. I've still got my money was worth. Yeah, exactly. I'd be yeah. sad that it doesn't happen, but yeah. I'd be so happy that, that I was part of it. And. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't regret the thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially the stuff me. that people bought for me. Oh my god, that's that's the best. <laughs> I did not even have to think for it, huh? Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm, um, I'm just gonna stop here. Sorry, Orca. Okay, okay. I thought you were gonna start with this, but I know a lot of people are not uh, listening podcasts to the very end. 
So I would just want to try to make like a cut here and ask Maso to like explain oh, what he's doing right. in Star Citizen and his content and all that. So that people can, you know, you want me to cut that guest, into huh? the in the beginning, then? <laughs> That's, I think it's okay. I mean, it's okay. still like, you know, all right. Fire away, um, Massacast. Okay, well, I'm uh, still a pretty new streamer. I just hit uh, affiliate. Um, I was just playing Star Citizen a bunch, and I figured, why the hell not? Um, so what I'm trying to focus on with my uh, channel is kind of uh, multi-crew gameplay because. Uh, Multi crew, the prospect for multi crew gameplay is one of the big things that drew me to uh, true star to Star Citizen. So uh, obviously, multi crew is not in the best spot right now. But uh, you know, as the channel grows, I want to, or as as the gameplay kind of develops, I want to play more and more with uh, with viewers, and um, you know, like uh, just kind of undertake kind of some of the bigger ships and uh, and uh, kind of explore Star Citizen that way rather than from the uh, seat of a single seater uh, but fighter. you've been playing for a long time actually because oh, we're yeah. both very yeah. new to the game mm -hmm. i've been uh i i backed the game in 2014 end of 2014 Holy and God. uh yeah <laughs> i've been following it since since 2012 yeah. because uh you know like at, at that point people probably remember if they were you know PC gamers, there was there was no Star Citizen or Star Stargate. Or blah. There was very few st uh, space games out there, you know, like it, that the entire genre had died. The last game that that I'd played was Freelancer, and when did that release? Like release like two thousand so long ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so when I saw Star Citizen pop into the field, and that it was Chris Roberts who uh, I I grew up playing his games. Uh, you know, I was like, oh my God. And I, I followed it pretty religiously. You know, I, I was definitely cautious at first kind of because the scope of the game was, you know, huge. I figured, well, I'll, I'll hold off and I'll, and I'll see if, if it's going anywhere. And in 2014, I was convinced enough after playing on my buddy's account that even if it didn't become the big open world space in that it was, I was exactly. having a great time just like, flying around and blowing stuff up, you know, Battlestar Galactica style with the, uh, you know, six degrees of freedom and uh, realistic physics and stuff like that. I was, I was sold. So yeah. I've been. It's so funny. Consuming... This is the feeling that you get as a new, as a new player as well. That's exactly what we were talking about, which is great. Yeah. right? Yeah. I've been ravenously consuming content uh, pretty much this whole time. My, my head is full of useless star citizen facts. <laughs> And that's the other thing too. Uh, I I just I really appreciate uh, dialogue um, about Star Citizen. So if anybody wants to follow and just jump in and like just talk about Star Citizen, a hundred percent, I'm down for that. Um, my Discord uh, on my Twitch stream. So like, feel free to jump in. And just my one disclaimer with all this is I'm like super new to streaming and like culture, Twitch culture and stuff like that. So just like. Be patient with me, but uh, yeah, good. if you want to, if um, you want to jump in and have conversations, that's totally cool. If you want to jump in and go try to kill stuff in a Carrick, that's also cool. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, twitch.tv slash Massocast. Yeah. And you're and streaming. we'll definitely have it all over the place. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So the video has the say... information real quick yeah. uh, underneath him. Uh, slash Massocast, as he said, he's streaming yeah, mostly well, Tuesdays and. Yep, at Massocast. And then he's also streaming mostly Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. So I've that been schedule is, the schedule is kind of in flux. Um, I may, may switch my days around, but those that's when I'm playing playing right now. I definitely want to add add more days just as soon as real life permits. Mm -hmm. um, but, oh, uh, you have real life. Damn, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still have an actual job. <laughs> this is great though because I know I'll tell you one thing. Like but like if you're watching this is like freshly baked, Maso is a new streamer, which means that he does not have super busy chat and has crazy amounts of knowledge. I've been I'm a streamer myself, I've been to his stream and and he comes to my stream as well. And I have and luckily Star Season has people like that that as a new player, and I know Orcat has the same same uh, vibe as well. That y 
there's a lot of help. Like if I have Maso in the chat, I know there's an answer to the question that I might have or someone new. But also whenever I ended up in Mastercast chat, I'll tell you one thing. I would my questions were always answered. Obviously, you might have to wait until he blows something up first. <laughs> but uh, I, he never was like, I don't know, man. Like, which you can get with me because I'm still new and I, I'm exploring. But Maso, but maybe if you're watching this uh, two years from now, Maso will be like the number star, number one streamer in in the directory. You never know. But <laughs> <laughs> but really, oh, Ma- sorry, like the sound is great, <laughs> the image quality great. Even though it's a new channel, he did a really good work. I just I love when I see that for me that's very very important and reads chat answers questions ah it's just amazing on the topic of reading chat uh uh i I get lonely so please come and chat yeah (laughs) yeah there you go that's one of the things i was talking about when i get there i talk a lot so (laughs) i I, I super appreciate that i really appreciate that i enjoy your stream man i think you're doing great job just like twitch is a slow slow thing and if usually if you're doing things right which i really think you are and also we can see you like i watch youtube uh, a lot i consume youtube a lot i'm not a youtube mm-hmm. creator but that's orchid's thing but i consume and i can see you pop out in places and whenever like i literally told like orchid hey man i've seen him in few um podcast and I, and i've listened to him this guy knows his stuff it, it's really good I, i'll be more wow. than happy to have him yeah and <laughs> but it's so important for, for content creation you know what i mean like yeah. and and i'm sure this will have an effect you're doing it better than many better than me for example i'm lazy oh. to go around and 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 do things just uh if you stick with star season i mean you never yeah. know with twitch to be honest but you're doing a good thing man I, mostly I, I, mostly I i'm it. just I'm just I'm playing anyways, and it, I'm having fun. So that's that's my only real priorities here. I'm not like shooting for the big times or anything like that. I'm just like I love the game, and I like talking about the game. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and steer things uh, in a direction. So we went over some of the yeah, stuff I'm that please. please. <laughs> <laughs> we went over you know what would you fix. So another thing I was recently talking about with some people when I was streaming was. Um, you know, they're really set on some of these things coming out in the future, and it's really exciting to see some of this stuff come out. Um, however, I almost feel like I would rather them stay in check, please hold your comment. I'd rather them stay <laughs> in Stanton, work out certain features and mechanics and the newer stuff that they're trying to implement in that one system so that way when they expand and and i'll say if they add pyro stop it there now start working on the gameplay enhancement you need to get more content into the game so i guess my i have two questions that we'll go over the first one's going to be with 3.940 and 4.1 on the horizon what are you most excited for and where do you think enhancements need to be played uh be put into the game either if you feel like it's more solar systems if you feel like there's more areas you need to be doing stuff mission content uh bring in refinery whatever it is what what do you feel like would really enhance the experience for gamers right now well i think the thing that we don't see and that uh the developers especially higher end developer or higher tier developers like todd pappy and the like have been telling us for a while now it's uh it's is that they can't add gameplay until the back-end tools are in place otherwise they just end up having to redo stuff um for example like OCS and server-side OCS touches literally every bit of code in the game. Uh, and and as such, if you designed a new gameplay loop, you would end up completely having to redo that or at least retool it because it wouldn't work with server-side OCS after that dropped. So, I don't know. I'm a little bit more uh patient when it comes to whether or not uh 
they're adding new gameplay loops and and features and stuff like that because i recognize that they have to have they have to have the back end gears meshing and turning before they can before they can pound that out so i i feel like they're getting to a point now where it's going to be uh we're going to see enhancements so i know it's kind of it doesn't really answer the question but um but like that's that's kind of where i'm coming from from when it comes to uh when it comes to what i want to see and what i think would really add to the game uh i'm okay with them adding pyro in fact i think it's good because with the new law system i think that uh the people who really want to play outside the law need a place to do that stanton's not the place to do that stanton never has been the place to do that according to the lore stanton is a very industrialized you know highly policed system right. um and you need a place for the people to just go and be marauders um and that's not Stanton anymore, especially with the the law system on the horizon. Yeah, um, and and I agree because and and one of the big things is I really do feel like Pyro is going to open up more gameplay because it is going to be that back end, like you said. I, I I completely get what you're talking about. Framework has to get in there. They have to be able to make things mesh together. Um, and I think adding the pyro system is something on the horizon that we are all looking forward to because then it creates that jump from system to system yep. which yep. opens up the galaxy so much bigger so yeah Do i you... agree that that's something we have coming up in four four or four one i forget pyro which one they, pyro. Don't, they never said they never said for sure they said they this said year. year oh um, that's right did you guys read the um that post about it was it was on reddit it was a developer who just kind of like added some clarity about the difference between like alpha and beta and yeah in, in developer terms well one mm -hmm. of the things that they mentioned was that um in alpha the only thing that they're generally concerned with is getting a thing working in the game so so them adding pyro system is them adding jump jump mechanics into the game that needs to come in that's gonna it's gonna be required for for squadron 42 um likely as well uh so it, it makes sense to me that they're that that would be an alternative kind of priority for them just to get those jump mechanics in and and working but i i agree in that i think i think once pyro's in i think they should again i i, I don't think there there's a real rush to put in additional systems after that but i have um, a question for both of you people who are designing planets and moons for example mm -hmm are not necessarily people who are working on backend or other game loops so what do you tell them to go and find our job and then call them back or you let them no. do no, their why, stuff why and then you? if yeah, you have they... a complete system why not like well because i mean the people who are designing planets aren't the people who are generating content for the planets they aren't right. the people uh, who are working okay, yeah. for the quantus uh, on the quanta system oh i hate that quantum system yeah. whatever <laughs> yeah um, we know what really it confusing. is yeah we talked we we basically all agreed on that uh last night on on captain's table Good was point. like mm. ugh, why <laughs> <laughs> did you name it this this was stupid anyways but you need that system to kind of generate the economy for that system and stuff like that so absolutely the people who are designing planets fly at her design system ecosystem there's after so system. many to design right like it's yeah. crazy yeah and you know work on biomes and and uh you know refine that planet tech v4 system so that it can handle different biomes so that it can handle things uh, features like rivers like roads mm -hmm. like you know all those kind of things keep working on that full steam ahead go ahead but uh you know as for act as for adding other systems for players to access after pyro not not a huge priority i i agree with orchid and orchid and that after after that uh you know uh, the, the development so priorities you, you both agree that if they and I, i'm not taking sides i'm just curious like if they if this system generation plan generation is working like is going faster in development because there's so much to develop anyways right because we have we we, we should have like 105 105 systems or something that we know of yeah. yes so way i mean and way past the launch or whatever but it doesn't matter but but if they're like if they know they have like five systems complete would you guys 
want them to not add them in the game just keep them aside right keep them aside until oh, okay. we get ser- until we get um service server meshing and we have uh larger player bases like even honestly with 50 players even adding pyro that's my gonna, only problem because that's it's gonna, gonna oof, it's gonna water yeah. it up so much but think about all the screenshots man <laughs> and yeah, we might laugh about it, but bro, screenshots are selling this game. I'm just gonna yeah. tell you that. Oh, I'm not yeah. I'm not the one who makes but, but hey, I mean yeah. Not How to mention ma- like it's it's a you know, it's a it's a red dwarf system and I uh I really mm. I'm I'm I don't know. The I, atmosphere will be crazy there, just like yeah, visual- like I, with all the, the you know, solar flares and stuff like that coming off the stars. I'm I am definitely a nerd when it comes to like astronomy and stuff like that i wouldn't call myself an amateur am- astronomer or anything like that but i'm interested Hobbies, i right? love yeah. i love the uh, attention to detail in the astronomical like bodies and stuff like that you know the fact that they've 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 pyro they've illustrated that it is a variable you know m type main sequence star that is you know highly uh highly active you know so it's the convection that's happening inside of that star is throwing off big radioactive solar flares i love how the yeah. atmosphere has been completely stripped off of like all the all the kind of near near star or near planets in there i love all the attention to detail in the geography of all yeah the and, and like, that's it's a amazing thing for me They've so. mentioned in a few of their videos that the amount of research and studying that these developers do to try and get this stuff as accurate as possible, it's amazing well, no. how much... Well, come on. And, and exactly like Mas, uh, Masas Cass said, was he's not an archeo- uh, an astronomer no, no, or anything I like that. What but... you're talking about right now is correct, but why yeah. are the lights on the ships on the wrong side? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Because I mean, they uh, didn't have the experience of bearded Chegg yeah. actually being of on there. Bearded Chegg. <laughs> <laughs> this is a common knowledge. Hello. It's, no, it's not common knowledge. That's not, no, it's not. I didn't I know no until idea. you You're told me. You're making a game about ships. No, I'm no, not but expecting that's every true. player to know about this, but if you have a team of experts about like creating planets and systems, which kudos to that, you need one person to tell you where the lights are on the ship. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but I'm going to just say, I'm just going to go out on a limb here, and please don't crucify me for this, but I would say no. that the stars and the sh- and the planets and stuff like that are probably higher pr- higher priority than proper lighting on, on the starships. I thought that was cool when you illustrated that. I had no idea, and it totally makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so absolutely, I think they should, you know, adhere to that. But I'm, I'm, I, I cut them a little slack when it comes to, like, finer details it's, like that it's very confusing uh, i i certainly on the ships i can see that they have like different studios working on different ships because like drake ships always yeah. have like like caterpillar has green light on the very very mm-hmm. edge of that wing on the starboard side freaking perfect you know and then origin ones are all over <laughs> well, and i i noticed today when i was flying it, i don't know if it was on the gladius or the uh buccaneer but they have the lights and i i looked at it and i'm like i can't remember which side is supposed to be which now because green I, green is right green is right okay and i think they had green on the left and i think about it like this it's it's right time to cross the street when it's green light right right so mm. so green is Green is right. Yeah. It's also green is light and it's starboard. So, okay, there you go. Gotcha. I'll, and I'll, I, like I'll never I said, remember. I appreciate that attention. I I would appreciate that attention to detail for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure they're gonna fix it's it. Not but but like I that's like because I don't have any like, marine experience. But yeah, I think it's in flight as well. But but that's yeah. that's the same thing. Like, what do you do now? You rework the ship because 85x is completely wrong. Like well, you have lights under. Really, you really need a re, re, um, no, a re you can't change like it. Really, properly. really simple. Oh, totally, you can. Yeah, you those, can tell those... it's a flash a different color. It's it's yeah. probably one line of code that says yeah. flash. No, the red. color is not a problem. It's the lights are under. So there are two rules, right? And I'm not gonna go far with this, but there are two rules. Like green is right and red is is left, port and starboard, and they have to be at the f- furthest edge of the ship so it yeah. doesn't matter if it's a wing or depending the on the ship net. right 
it's, it's and not then even, x85 it, has it like under <laughs> and yeah, wrong yeah. wrong way for example so. but like but like that's that's a pretty easy fix to add like a, yeah. a, a bulb i don't think it would be i, I mean think you it might be, be right because a couple minutes the each, ships right. are not like one piece right so yeah. Yeah. i guess you can like attach things yeah. if they yeah. were ever like i would be really i'm okay with it now i made it as a joke and all that it does trigger me a little bit because yeah. i just see immediately because exactly yeah yeah and uh, but I would be like right now. I'm I'm really okay with it. I'm no no joke. But I would be really disappointed if not even if they don't fix the shifts that have it now. But if they continue doing this, I'll be like, yeah. I mean, because it because of what you said, I love attention to details, mm -hmm. and to me, this is that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, that was. <laughs> So yeah, I, love, I love these digressions. So like, I'm just smiling the whole time we're tangenting. And I'm like, oh my God, we're so far from the point. I love it. <laughs> but well, yeah, and... I don't know. I guess like to, 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 to answer the original question, like what would I like to... No, no, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you asked like, what would, what would be the thing that I would like to see to yeah. like improve the game? At this point, it's... Thankfully, I know it's on their radar, but at this point, it's really like just enhancing the multiplayer aspect of this game. Mm -hmm. You know, like we need better tools to get into groups. We need better tools for communicating, you know, with groups. We need, uh, you know, that the incentive. Whole... Incentive. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. It... Definitely incentive. But uh, but that's that's what I would like. That's what I'm excited to see yeah. in the in the you know in the future and one of the things i will say one of the things i was so bummed to see fall off the radar or off the roadmap was um was their multi multi crew experience um oh. tab that they had set for i think it was 4.0 oh, they were really? going to like uh yeah they were going to it was going to be improved turret gunner or was it it was i think it was more broad than that i think they might have split it up now into like missile operator that we're getting and yeah, they were uh, and that, Kurt yeah. gunner which i think is back on the roadmap but they just said basically multi-crew uh, enhancements for 4.0 and man like obviously that's kind of my jam i was really bummed to see that to uh, see that disappear so and, and i yeah. think yeah it so just kind of jumping on what you're talking about it, so me and chegg playing on the retaliator i I don't understand why that engineering station isn't mm -hmm. an actual functional station where you can control that stuff. Because if Chegg was up on the on the driver's seat, I'm not going to jump on a gunner because turrets are kind of crap right now. They are, um, I'd rather really get in that engineering platform. And if Chegg's saying, hey, we're getting hit around, on yeah. forward shields, I can enhance the forward shields. Yeah. Hey, you we can need already more... kind of do that with yeah. shield hardening. But it doesn't work very well. <laughs> well, and and on those engineering stations, I think the only thing you can control is the power that goes to. You can't even do that. Doesn't work. Here's the it, thing. It did. Well, I want Orkaid on another ship rather than having him in my ship. Well, and I'm that's a problem. It well, yeah. Problem. Yeah. As long as you don't have a, a reason to have another person on your ship, yeah. it's not working. Uh, there was a dev video recently that kind of touched on this, and they talked about how it's basically something to do with the the code that they have to change. So basically, when somebody gets into the pilot seat, take over it the controls. Overrides, yeah, it exactly. overrides all the other controls. So it's something that they have to build out so that people will actually be able I'm, to play. With I'm really them. glad that they have this, like, as maybe not as a priority, but you kind of feel like they they want to make. And with oh, Mole, yeah. they made a statement, not like verbally, but they certainly want to incentivize people to play together in the same yeah. shit. You know, it's one of the things that could, that could, uh, that would instantaneously make it better for multi. -crew. This is what I want. Tell me. Auto gimbals on turrets. I 100% yes. agree. Yes. Man. Like, Oh, they, I they've said they're going agree. to, they said they're going to, but like that should that yesterday, give it to us yesterday. Like, yeah. Yes. Like uh, right there. That would mean that like, even if technically it's, it, it would be better for somebody to be flying another ship with at least with auto gimbals on a turret you are marginally effective yeah you know you're so if it gives you you're doing something if it gives you like maybe an 80 percent hit chance 
on an auto gimbal. Th I would take that because right now it's crap. It's it's so hard to hit anything on those turrets. So plus dissing between players in the same ship. Exactly. Like it's... Yep. I I have an idea about opening the entire game to like multi multi crew, not on the same ship only, but in any ways, and it's one thing. But I'm really not sure how. The, you know, we, we always have these things like, oh, this will be so easy. But I always have in my mind, it looks so easy from my perspective, and, but it might not be. But if you could sell cargo, and, and fo follow me on this, if you can sell cargo on a stolen ship in CBD, you've opened everything because we stole ships with full cargo, but then we can only ransom if you maso could steal my caterpillar and actually sell this cargo that would incentivize you to steal my ship to invest time to steal my ship which would mm -hmm. incentivize me to have orchid with me when i'm flying my ship yep. to protect me from you you yep. immediately with this one tiny change that is technically already in the game more or less you open the entire game and it's holy shit man like it, it opens so many things the so, problem but it might be very difficult to do it's not a tiny thing yeah and that's yeah. it's exactly yeah. the way it's because of the way that the um that the uh cargo is registered to your player account basically oh. um so and ultimately that was the other thing that was super bummed that fell off the roadmap was the uh, uh enhanced economy. economy yes because yes. that was that's like your first step to being able to kind of have those more interactive player accounts that can talk to each other, that can trade currency with each other, <laughs> exactly. you know, stuff like that. So, so that was another thing that I was just like, no, when I yeah. saw that go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, sorry. I... I just thought of another thing to go again, way back. Another thing that I would really love to see, uh, if I if I could choose one mechanic to be put into the game to to improve it, improve scanning mechanics. Seriously, oh, that has to be worked on. Scanning I'm an player, affects so. every aspect of the game. Scanning, scanning would affect bounty hunting. Scanning would affect combat. Scanning would affect uh, mining for sure. For fuck's sakes, Ugh, <laughs> that's the reason I don't like mining. It's just all the like wandering around being like scan. Nope scan nope and there's no way to mark a target that you've already scanned yes. you know there's no way to do larger larger range scans to be able to like tell at a distance directional scanning thing. man directional, directional scanning and it scan okay so for, oh with uh with your uh cutlass red too being able to scan for life signs all of a yep. sudden unlocks new gameplay for actual medical gameplay that's scanning. what he was waiting for man yeah scanning is, that... a, is is something that it would touch all aspects of the game and make you know, like it even it even affects multi crew. All of a sudden, if you could have an, a dedicated scan operator, <laughs> I can you scan know. in a sen and and feed you information, and you can yeah. use it. Dude, yeah. I've been playing Eve for years. The if you don't know how to use your directional scanner and probes for scanning in evil line, you can't play that game. And that's another space game, right? And when I came here, when I went, oh, there is a scanner, and I. I really tried doing anything in my power to like really utilize the scanner. I was like, I was, well, I was like, I was disappointed at the moment. I, I was, but I was, it was obvious that they have to work on the scanner for sure. Yeah. But I agree 100%. Woo. Yeah. Scanning improvements would just would be instantaneous. <laughs> Sorry. That was just something I just thought oh, of. Yeah. Well, that was yeah, great. I had to jump was back, jump, jump back to that. So, what were we talking about before that? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but this is what I really like about this because when we do our podcast, we have list of things and we yeah. follow, you know, but, and this is more of like brainstorming with another person. And, and this is, ah, but I'm really enjoying this, man. Yeah. We all love the game. So, Oh, I'm definitely down to do more of these podcasts because <laughs> this has been really nice. Yeah. And we're really hit me up yet, anytime. Cause I, I just, I, <laughs> for I, sure. I love this. I don't have, uh, I have a couple of real life, uh, star citizen friends, but like, yeah, like, I have all I this knowledge know. and I just want to gush about about it with people but yeah I, <laughs> yeah I don't I get that's why it's like great. any any time I can jump onto like captain's table or like night crew or yacht club I'm just like yeah yeah, yeah take yeah. me I'll do it but I uh, talk to you guys when I listen to your podcast when you're like yeah I talk to you to Paul you just don't hear it because I'm on this side and I'm not part of the podcast but trust me 
I argue with you guys a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you should you should definitely be like, hey, Paul, poke, 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 and jump on well, there. We're, I'd be really we're curious, super curious new. Like, we're super Does new to and, and and I'm starting starting to like know the people. Oh, definitely, we're gonna. We were talking about this actually. Okay. We, I, I was thinking about because it's two of us, and we could check with Paul if he's down to it. Um, we can join together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Why not? Yeah, because it's uh, like honestly, the new player perspective is super valuable. These I agree. Days, you know, because like I, after actually, this is kind of interesting. Actually, uh, when I started streaming and started kind of playing with my brother, uh, who hadn't really kept up with Star Citizen, I realized just like how much, how much of the, uh, I guess, knowledge of the game I'd taken for granted. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be arrogant there. Just like no, you know, you're not. I, That's uh, what I said. You, you know, know so I've much, been man. Immersed in the game for so long that I that I, the stuff that I do without thinking, he's baffled on. He's just like, yes. "How do you do this?" And it, and it was like it was after playing with him that I was like, "Oh my god, yeah!" Like this this game is a real bitch if you're trying to just pick it up. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> like, oh yeah. But that yeah. also makes it interesting. And um, as as a sandboxy game, you need that. You you need to want to explore and learn um as a new uh, trust me that the the complexity of it even now it helps the game be more immersive and and i'm sure you can see this where it's hard for people to start playing the game but if they mm. stick for like i don't know a week or two that's it they're they're citizens like they, it's mm. so like they might stop playing for for a while or whatever but they are waiting for that next patch they're waiting for that next ship they are they are listening to podcasts they are yeah. listening yeah. To, you know like they are part of it doesn't matter Man, and we actually uh, execute uh, jumped into my stream the other night because um, I had some like potential like fix my feet fleet questions uh, for the for the infra runners there. And, They're amazing um, as well. And uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the things he was talking about was uh, was just how how stupid it is that Star Citizen or um, CIG is still like clinging to this idea of artificial scarcity for their for their ship pledges by not having I can't all the ships available that. all year round and I'm like that you have so many new players who are flooding into the game right now who it's want so to spend more money yeah. and they can't and I just think like I, I get it like back back in the earlier parts of the uh, of you know that that might have played out that tactic of like creating that artificial scarcity and like Honestly, it's kind over, of man. scum, scummy tactic of like uh, tempting those impulse buys that might have been necessary a few years back when you're not entirely sure of your uh, of your income because there's not enough of the game to have it kind of marketing itself. But just gave me all the ships. I think those days are past. This game. That is one thing that, point. I... that I want to change. One thing, Gorka, that I want to change is this. What you <laughs> yeah, just said. Yeah. That's, that's and I, I really, I really do think that it would help a lot if they were to just open up oh all ships under five hundred dollars, allow people to buy it at any time, and then so make the ones. I'm well, fine. and then make the the five hundred dollar ones something where it's or a limited stock they, because you do want, sh want you want ships that are almost rare. exclusive or yeah yes. rare and especially Bro, the, the ones that, that have thousand dollars is exclusive because of its price already don't worry about it that... <laughs> that's Fair true enough but yeah but I, I i i'm i'm okay with them keeping for example idris's javelins even even like the isperia ships you know that are supposed to be rare um, like the uh, Glaive and the Scythe and stuff like that. I'm fine with uh, the 890 Jump. I'm fine with them keeping those exclusive limited hulls because they want them to be rare in game. I and then they that. give it from for the subscription. That was yep. disgusting. I'm sorry. Like seeing 10,000 I was like, dude, yeah. I... This ship, everyone oh. has it. We do not know what subscription is back then. Don't give yeah. those ships for a subscription. Come on, yeah. man. I, I don't feel like the ship is anything anymore. I don't wow. like now when I see 890 jump and, and this happened when we started playing. When I see 890 jump now, I have no feelings about it. Yeah. 100% yeah. honestly. If yeah. I see There's Tana like though, I'm like, oh, someone's flying Tana. Yeah. Or Mako or Sam. Ooh. Oh, I just want <laughs> you to know that I, I uh, shouted you out yesterday. 
and we we actually talked about the reliant uh on oh, Captain yeah. Sable yesterday <laughs> so oh i can't wait yeah um, i'm gonna like it but <laughs> no, no 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 we actually came to the same kind of conclusion that we did when i was chatting with you on your stream is that like they the the reliant will have a niche it just isn't there yet it just yeah, isn't true. in game yeah um but anyways, like, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I think that the artificial scarcity thing is is stupid at this point. They should just basically unlock all the games that they don't want to have specifically hull limited. Uh, just let people buy whenever, you know, whenever they want. Or whenever tell they us want. why. And like you for would real. have money pouring in right now. Like mm -hmm. your sales figures last year were some of the biggest that they've ever had. I guarantee you they would have been bigger if you'd have let people buy what they want when they want it, you know? And keep and, Warbond yeah. option all the time. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Or like uh, the concept sales. Okay. I could see if they wanted to keep the concept sales. Sure. You know, that are in concept. Okay. Well, maybe we're talking about the ships okay. that are already in game. They have yeah. the mechanic already here. Cause we've already seen it with the origin 300 series. They need to also look at customizing ships. Even if you can just paint it another color. Because yeah. they talked about this, though. About I know it, they yeah. did, but I wish they could do this more with some of the ships, not all of them. Because it, I don't want to see uh, a mess prospector running around that's you know purple pink? and no. orange and Why not? black and uh, bro, you could paint your own car any any color you want. But yeah. but here, so me and Chegg talked about this before. And I want to get your take on this. And, and unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up here soon because oh, I know everybody's waiting for dinner. So, <laughs> oh, what? Uh, Where are you going? And you'll be back on this show. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. telling you now, we'll have you back <laughs> no on. No way. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I want you, man. And, and so we'll good. multi crew. I'm going to multi crew on your ship at some point. So sure. I'll come hang yeah, out. I'm down we as well, that. man. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So me and Chegg had this idea, and we we're talking about, you know, uh, organizations being able to have some type of logo and stuff like that. You couldn't make this available to everybody because you'd not? see stupid pictures on. Big, big. Yeah, you'd, you'd see seen it. obscene well things. Known phenomena. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I'm against that. We had this idea that if your organization was able to maintain a certain level, which that being number of people or just put the uh, price on it. a dollar yeah exactly a dollar uh a, a auc amount or uh or a dollar amount even stuff like that to be able to have a logo that goes on the ship and then even that on top of that also have an option to where you can pick through certain types of logos or whatever kind of like the valentine's uh, ship that they did, the combat ship. Heart Seeker. Yeah, if they had certain logos like it that, that you up, could man. We love ships and planes. Exactly, dude. exactly. Yeah. I don't understand why that's not something that they're allowing now. Create small little art pieces. Allow that as a customization on your ship. You can kind of drag it around, pick that's where you want it. Part of the game for sure. It will be. Yeah, it will I think be, the main but... reason is that like uh, I think that'll ultimately kind of. I think you'll start to see stuff like that when they do um, more of the like physicalized ship components, and and when they have that system nailed down, basically a logo would just be another component mm -hmm. that has like specific locations you could you could put it on. Honestly, I don't. I I say like you don't even have to have the requirements for um uh for like org size or whatever to have a custom logo. You know, just have it cost X amount of money and then use that money if as like money. I agree because then someone can yeah. be paid to check it. Like if exactly. I make an emote yeah. on Twitch, precisely. Yeah. yeah, but if it's free, just please don't fuck that. No, unless it won't you be can free, you yeah. because it will it will require some manpower to monitor. You need that. moderation, and, yeah, and that's moderation. that's why it has to be that's why it has to be a monetary thing. Um, uh, but also, I mean, on top of that too, uh, there's machine learning and image recognition and stuff like that has come a long way so a large part of that could be uh could be uh, automated kind of automated thing. you know because you're, you're going to be able to have uh algorithms kind of programmed to be able to recognize you know explicit images or um or you know words uh, man words, and words, words and yeah, yeah, you know yeah, stuff like that so so you know i think i think ultimately automation could take care of a large portion of it 
but there's still going to have to be, you know, moderators kind of looking through things or like dealing with, with logos that get reported. Um, if, if, yeah, but if there's a price on it, if there's price tag, you can have one person who is going through it. Yeah, I'll wait for 10 days to get my logo. What's the yeah. rush? You're playing yeah. an MMO. Well, and the price what's, is a filter what... too. Exactly. Ultimately. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's your take on skins while we are on the subject? Would you pay mm. extra money? Like we had a skin sale now yep. and it was 25 bucks for an expedition skin for... Um, Ugh. Ugh. You don't like it. <laughs> well, I just don't like that they're charging twenty five bucks for a skin. It's a like, big ship, though. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's twenty five bucks for. I agree. It's let's expensive. be honest. It's a lot a of paint. Really, really <laughs> basic paint job that it's is true. is not worth. It's 20 not really. That, yeah. There was no art uh, artist input in that. You know, any any serious input in that. That was something that they just basically were like slap some white, bang bang. I guarantee you, it took them like fucking ten minutes, and they were done. You know, like, and you're going to charge 25 bucks for that? I'm sorry, that's yep. disgusting. But you don't but have to pay for it. Ultimately, exactly. They're making money, and I exactly. love that. That's I want the opinion. developers of my game to make money. Fuck, sure. make all the money in the world. Sure. And so I, I don't have a problem with paid skins, but I thought $25 was a bit okay. much. That's why I didn't buy yeah. it for my character. Fair enough. But, um, but like, I'm fine. Go, the... go price your skins or whatever you want. Just don't price them all like that because, like, come on. Like, the... You know, you, you got to let other people buy skins who aren't willing to shell out what's like you know over an hour's want worth of only work one ship people. yeah you know yeah. and, and the, and the five dollar price there. point that they have on like yep. the aurora stuff that's nice yeah i'll show that's out not aurora stuff. those skins are for every ship they were just skinned on aurora i found that out oh, later really? but they removed it like completely so they they are placed on aurora as um as a selling point but you can have that on mantis for example and i saw a picture of mantis with the pirate ship skin the same one actually it was it, some like subscribers got the pictures rev shared the pictures with me oh, but really? they removed the skin system and i'm just confused like if you fucking remove the skin system that was already in the game can you please remove it from the store <laughs> like mm -hmm. what the crap because i bought that and i was like how the hell do i apply this shit the website in the store is frankly an atrocity yes which i don't understand <laughs> that's my that's my issue because Okay, we can agree that, that the things that we feel like are easy to change or not easy to change in game, we don't know shit. But changing the number, the SCU on 315 from 2 to 12, fuck off. That's <laughs> so especially, easy to change. I can change it for you for free. Yes. Especially when they own 25% of the company that's supposed to be doing their web development. <laughs> what the f and that's that's one baffled. minute of yeah. someone's time. God am, damn it. I'm utterly baffled why the, you know, if they're so hard up for, for content for, you know, for video content and stuff like that, if they're, if they're so hard up for stuff to show us, where the fuck has Turbulent been? What the hell are they doing? I'm curious. I want to know. Like, I agree. Do, do an episode on Turbulent. You know, why, what's going on in the background there? Why is you, the website You know what so that is, okay. No. So that's the oh. company, that's the company they're outsourcing website basically too yeah oh really all their okay. web development they're also the people i think in charge of doing uh implementing things like voip and foip in oh yes uh, so that one they it... had someone talking about that right with the new ui yeah. about yeah. yeah but they did not touch on website and i really think website is good actually a lot of people are like well it's shit anyways i really like it i think it's, no, it's very pretty. good uh yeah. i i like browsing it it's crazy i don't give a crap about that in, in general mm -hmm. but it's very interactive and it's responsive and everything it's just fucking wrong all the information yeah. is wrong on yeah. it yeah uh yeah, it almost sure. seems like it would have been nice if they kind of made it a wiki site uh, style where us yeah. as a community that actually track these well, small mm -hmm. changes we could it will be it will be <laughs> part of the though. game though <laughs> You know what, though? Now that I think about it, Star Citizen has so many haters out there right now, they, they can't do that. Wow. There are wiki sites. It's just sad that basically... And this is something that new players wouldn't know, probably, and that's, you know, it, it's and that's that basically go to third-party websites if you want your information. That's you know, the problem. Go to hardpoint. Go to hardpoint.io. That... Go to, you know, like, a Galog for trading. Yep. You know. Galog is so good. There's By the so way, the guy many sites. He's streaming... The guy who is making Galog and is, uh, we can add his his name under such a great show. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know his name on top of the on top of the head, my head. I know it's Rev Revins or something. 
and uh, but we we yeah. can add the link to his Twitch channel. So in the evening, he plays super cool jazz like jazz music. He's drinking his coffee and he's coding Galog, and you can ask any fucking thing about it. And then later on, he's gonna like fly his his caterpillar and do some trading. Dude, that's he's awesome. So freaking nice to chill with. Oh, I love that guy. Is he, is he in Europe? I have no freaking clue. Oh, because I don't know when he like. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to catch uh, him on a stream, but I don't know if I've I'll, seen anybody doing that. So, I'll say no. He doesn't say Galag or anything. Um. So you have to actually. I, I stumble upon him or something. I'll. I'll hmm. Well, I'll send you the link for sure. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> and good. then we can add it to. Yeah, and if you like, just FYI, we are both okay with like. If you have someone that you like and care for, like what we were just saying now, like website, stream, YouTube, you already figured out, but I want I, I want to say it. We love sharing that information. Like there's no problem with that ever. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a suck. Like I want all the content. Man. We're like, not building an empire here. We're building no. a community. So yeah, exactly. if you have anyone personally you want to shout out, please feel free Go to do for so. Go bro. <laughs> oh, um, good. Yeah, I don't know. Just, I mean, just... he's been doing it already. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't want to push you into it, but I, I want to say, like, it's always cool. Like, if, you, if something crosses your mind, a streamer or yeah. YouTube channel or anything, just throw it out. Yeah. Well, usually, if good. I if I remember where the information has come from, then I exactly, will. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give that shout out. The problem is, like, I consume so much, I have a hard time Save keeping it straight. Like, who said this? Was this an actual dev thing, or was this somebody, like... I, I don't know. So I just throw it out there like, this is what I heard or, you know, like what I read somewhere. It's not a very good reference, <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, yeah, here's here's the answer that my brain is telling me. I, I, I don't know where it came from, but uh, it came from somewhere in the Star Citizen knowledge verse. <laughs> yeah. But, All right. uh, I think yeah. he's gonna. I think he's gonna wrap it, man. We yeah. just gotta keep talking, we... man. <laughs> I would. I'm if I, I keep doing if this I hours. didn't keep this in line, we'd probably record for the next five hours. But uh, it is about that time, folks. We need to sign off. We need to end the podcast at this point. I want to point out again: check out Massocast on twitch.tv slash Massocast. Uh, right now, he is mostly streaming on Tuesdays and Thursdays, five to eight p.m. Pacific time, and you can catch him on Twitter at Massocast. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this special. If you have any last words, Massocast, go for it. Three, two, one, podcast end. <laughs>